don't have to have wigs. We can be ourselves. <laughs> it's after hours. It's late. We've taken the wigs oh, off. Good, good. Okay, we're, good. we're among friends. You know? And this is a poem called The Battle of the 44 Pointed Red Deer. The little child said, Please, mother, please tell of the great red stag who said, All shall be well. The Red Deer King, a heart of 44, who put an end to Edward's terrible war. The story is old as ancient as time, a fable from the earth told in rhyme. Like phases of the moon or the sun's rise, the pull of the ocean is constant and wise. One spring morning when Stonehenge was new, a doe and her fawn tripped wet through the dew. Undaunted and curious mother, said the fawn, of whom is that statue in the center of the my sweet one, said she, that magnificent stone, erected by Edward the Elder to stand alone, tis the likeness, my son, of our own stag king, who the day you were born did a marvelous thing, the day I was born. Oh, tell me the story. How is my birthday the day of his glory? That's why I brought you inside here, my son, to tell you the tale of all that was done. A tale of two mighty kings, a tale of of woeful and wondrous things. On that day I carried my child inside, the day when my child and I nearly died. On this very spot the story takes place. This is the grass where I first saw his face. The warrior king who struck all with dread, hunting us down, wanting us dead. What was the reason? Why did he kill? Why did he hunt us? Why? For the thrill. He loved the game. He loved the chase. The smell of our fear made his cruel heart race. He'd feast on our bodies, our muscles, our meat, our tongues and our eyes, he thought deliciously sweet. The young deer stuttered and stammered. Oh, no, tis true, said his mother. This Edward did so. So listen, so listen to this marvelous story of my dear child's birth and our stag king's glory. Was the hunt Edward loved, the hunt that was all. His scabbard was gold, the sword eager to fall. His bow and his blade never left his arm. Prayer bored him. Worse was the farm. His once healthy country had now become an idol. His sleek white stallion was ever in bridle. Shopkeepers and tailors were forced from their fronts. The carpenters and farmers were made to join hunts. Tools were left dropped in the silt. Barns unfinished, homes half built. Potters left clay, the cobblers their shoes. Schoolhouses were empty, for poets, no muse. The people wanted more than a bow and a knife. The people had blood, but they wanted a life. Matters they took into their own hands, fencing the deer into one large stand. This way, when Edward wanted his meat, the killing would be easy, a corral for his treat. When the king saw the fences around the deer, he stared at the creatures so soft and sincere. My people don't want to hunt you, beasts. They would rather to other pursuits be released. And a king must abide by his subjects' eyes. Edward the Elder thought himself wise. Two stags, one white with points of full score, one more glorious, red with points forty-four. Those two, said Edward, those two must live. Do not hunt them. To them, their lives I give. Mother, said the fawn, cherishing the word, wasn't the red deer king of both herds? He is our king now, son. Be patient, be bold. Listen to the story, all will be told. The people left safe, went back to their homes. The deer from the fence were no longer to roam. Shooting one deer a day, meat was easy to gain. Now all is simple, was the hunter's refrain. Not so for the trapped forest deer. Many were pierced by the arrow so near. Not just the unfortunate with the arrow in his side. Tore many trampled as they tried to hide. One killed, but many more maimed. Every day the terror was the same. Hunters in the morning, fear would ignite. Deer scrambling to escape the fight. Approaching the white stag of our herd, the red heart with him exchanged a word. Offering one of their own every other day, the madness and confusion might be driven away terrible solution, but suffering would be eased. Head solemn, the stags were far from pleased. To each herd, the terrible situation was explained. A buck drew the lot from his face, the blood drained. When the hunters saw the buck, trembling alone, remarkable deer, they said, wisdom they've shown. 
the arrow flew, piercing the buck's heart. And this was the day the tradition did start. Mornings a deer to doom was sent. On and on for weeks it went, till the lot fell to one exceptionally mild, a doe whose belly was swollen with child. Twas I and the child I carried, twas you. My mind was cloven, what would I do? The terms of the lottery were crystal clear. We would die. My pulse drummed with fear. I beg you, I said on all four knees, White King, the lot has fallen to me. Inside my womb there's a child to be born. Willingly I will leave my fawn forlorn. Once he's able to live on his own, I will pay the price with skin and bone. I will go, but spare my child, please. No, said the stag, your pain cannot ease. The lottery has fallen, you must die. Oh, I wail. Crestfallen, desperate, on the ocean tossed, my life and yours both would be lost. Blessed! The stag of forty-four was near. Hearing my troubles, he said, Sweet dear, till your fawn is born, live, go, fly, and be at peace. All is not woe. Grateful beyond words, I bounded away, eluding death till another dark day. But one question yet I still had to face, the fact that another would be forced in my place. In the forest evenly falls the rain. Someone else would feel my pain. The red heart walked towards the arrows. Saying goodbye, he glanced at the sparrows. Ask another to make the sacrifice, not the red heart. He would pay my price. From a distance, I watched the coming assault. Only now I understood. This was all my fault. The hunters looked down on the great being. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Edward arrived with his men and his flag. Look, sire, it's the 44-pointed stag. What are you doing, you beautiful beast? You are not made for my royal feast. I spared you and the white stag from the game. Strong are you. Send the lane. I have come, said the heart, to take the place of a doe with child. Her fate I will face. Two should not die, so here I have come. Bury my bones when you are done. From a slumber, the king was now awake. From this heart, a lesson he could take. Lay down your life so another will not fall. Edward stared at the antlers held tall. I will, the stag replied, and I shall. I am not afraid. All shall be well. Death is a small price for the gift of life. What if the doe had been my wife? Tugging at his whiskers, staring at the deer, Edward said, I am glad you are here. Care for the least is what a king must do, so in a payment for a teaching so true, you and your herd may go free. Teach the others as you've taught me. Take your kin, live in peace. All are spared, your family released. But the strong stag shook his heavy head. O oh, king of men, this wood is my bed. If I leave with my herd, if we turn and go, the remaining will suffer. This we both know. Day and night your arrows shall fall. For years in anguish my friends will call. What would be gained at such a cost? The doe and fawn I saved would be lost. But these other deer are none of your own. The heart resolutely stood on a stone. Again Edward tugged and pulled at his beard. Stag, you inspire. His throat he cleared. I see the garden of your mind's been unweeded. This is a great lesson, the king conceded. From this stockade of death, all will be freed. King, answered the heart, you are noble indeed. Edward responded, go, live in peace. But the stag again refused to be released. A stillness settled. A rabbit stopped and stared. No one could believe what the great heart dared. The forest was watching, twisted and fret. Too long have I lived with danger to let. It falls so heavily on my friends now, suffering elsewhere, though I may not know how. The madness of murder, chaos, fear. Too long I have held these feelings near. If we walk away, what creatures are next? There's no honor under this pretext. Living without limit or mercy, mercy, now all will be killed. With blood and bones, the soil will be tilled. Abandon the forest and be at peace with myself, knowing that others pay for my wealth. If you can free us all, merciful king, legend awaits. Freedom will ring. If you really intend to be at peace, not only the deer must be released. 
Edward could not believe what he was hearing. The eyes of his men behind him were leering. Again he sighed. Sighed. His head began to fall. You will make crop farmers of us all. You are a teacher and I am your student. All will be free. It is most prudent. There I am finished. It will be done. The game is played and you have won. My men and I must practice what we preach. We understand the cost of the wisdom you teach. The woods will be wild, free and singing. You have struck the bell and it is ringing. Run in the fields, enjoy the sun, live long and know what you have done. For all the wild forest beasts, from the greatest to the least. Deep in the woodland, please pass the water. Deep in the woodland, the sparrows sang a song, but the great stag did not trot along. Gently he shook his antlers from side to side, and he looked out as an eagle did glide. The swallows danced, he saw them play in the trees, a falcon, an owl, a jay. You see the brightly feathered flyers that sing so sweetly, the Lord's true friars. Alas, your majesty, the stag quietly said, soon now they will all be dead. Can you, king, tell me why your slings will crash upon the sky? With the wrath they have never known, repeat the kindness you have shown. Open your heart, not just halfway. Free the birds this September day. Good heavens, and I thought I was strong. The warrior bit his lip, but you are wrong. You are pious, unrelenting, and stubborn. The heart stood undaunted and offered in turn. To lead, we exchange the paved road for rougher. Can we be happy if others suffer? The straight road does not bend. No peace unless to all it extends. The king slipped off his proud horse, his powerful hand on his sword, of course. Right up to the great stag he stalked, he spit on the ground before he talked. And what of the fishes? Edward hissed. The rainbow trout, will he not be missed? The king and the heart stood eye to eye. For their freedom will you not want to try? Oh, oh you are wise, great king, to consider the lakes ponds and streams. No thought must we take were we to abandon those silver swimmers who bring life to the shimmering rivers. The fate of the ocean might be death. Then we would not enjoy a single breath. It would weigh so heavily on our head. We'd wish it were we that were dead. If we do not speak for these silent ones, for the salmon who upstream so brilliantly run, for the catfish in the dark, who do we think will? The stag's eyes penetrated. The king felt the thrill. Our vegetables tasty when eaten alone. Our grains, fruit, what of a scone? This now seems to be my only source for nourishment. I'll have no other recourse. You drive a hard bargain. <coughs> now I am in terror. <coughs> Yet I see in your thought no visible error. Your logic stands tall as an old oak tree. For any to have peace, even the fish must be free. Ever elder called to his attendants. Throughout my realm I will make an amendment. From this day liberated are all living beings with my heart now open. My eyes are seeing. To all beings that fear harm as me, this is my true wish and lasting decree. None shall be hunted, none trapped, none killed. To all my children this I have willed. Edward turned back to the powerful heart. Stag, I hope you see this as a start. Content? Can you now breathe in peace? Now that the rest of the forest is unleashed, the heart looked around at the woods with joy, the birds all singing as if the sky were a toy. The squirrels, the foxes, even the ducks were giggling and laughing at their good luck. A tear fell from the strong heart's eye. Yes, he said with a Herculean sigh, a single tear that reflected the earth. Everyone was shown what they are worth. Forty-four pair of sparrows landed on his great rack, singing this melody with no fear of attack. Then leaping away like a young fawn, he bounded across this very lawn. <coughs> Open the gates! Edward's voice did resound. The fences were playfully knocked to the ground. Deer scattered, running light as a feather. Edward's heart was as warm as the weather. And Edward the Elder built as he should. This circle of stones with the roof so all could rejoice, remember, sing, and hear the ballad of the forty-four pointed red deer. It's true, whispered the fawn. You and I were here. He spoke so soft she could barely hear. The lad's legs bouncing, unable to behave. We were the ones the great king saved. Yes! You were born that afternoon, here on the grass, not a moment too soon. 
Imagine, said the deer's mother, so many being kind to one another. The little fawn said, please, mother, please tell of the great red stag who said, all shall be well. The red deer king, a heart of 44, who put an end to Edward's terrible war. Thank you.